Greeting citizen, and welcome to your weekly dose of this week in Star Citizen. Let's get right to it with Admiral Disco Beard, and a look at some new weapon toys coming soon. We are joined by Johnny Jasavizius as he talks us through how the new Lightning Bolt Company weapons will work. Basically a giant high powered taser minus the wires these guns utilize a new damage type called electron damage. Essentially force lightning in a stick. And so let's get this out of the way. Incoming obvious meme. In. So these new guns vomit huge great gobs of electricity leaving your victims charred and smoldering. The sniper rifle fires more slowly than the pistol, but does more damage. And the really neat thing is, if anyone else happens to be stood near the person who gets shot, he gets his balls fried as well. They don't initially look to be as effective as a decent ballistic or laser focused weapon, but my god they look like a whole lot more fun. I'd really like to see the Lightning Bolt Company makeshift mounted versions of these weapons, that are designed to work just like that is owned El Cid from Freelancer. Doesn't do much to a ship's hull, but does enormous amounts of shield damage. That would be cool. And bonus points, if you know what that is owned El Cid was, and where to get it, answer in the comments below. So these new weapons look like a whole lot of fun, and just in case you thought we'd done all of the obvious memes. I am a disco. In part 2 we get some long awaited news about the player to player trading app. It's only tier 0 for now, and will include UEC in prison merits only, but it's a start. The current system of faffing about with a service beacon, and hoping your mate gets to it first is utter shite, and so this will hopefully get us moving in the right direction, and make multi crew a whole lot less complicated and satisfying, if captains can pay their damn crew a decent living wage. Later on down the line we should be able to trade commodities and equipment as well, again, much like how it was done in Freelancer. Quite why it's taken so long to get to this point is beyond me, but well done I suppose for at least getting us to tier 0. Subscribers rejoice, the latest edition of Jump Point is hot off the press, and is crammed full of juicy articles, such as the developer interview with Michael Sizemore on the Drake Cutlass Blue. Stanton's new totally not a pirate ship or enforcement vessel. I've flown this around for a few days now, and I gotta say, it's actually not bad. I love the flashy lights. Very Miami Vice. We then get a visual dictionary to military ships, which is nice I suppose. Why not have this kind of information in the damn Galactopedia? Sure, it has an article about the Idris in it, for example, but no mention of length, weapons, crew, systems. It just tells me it's a ship made by Aegis, and is larger than a corvette, and has a teeny tiny little picture I can barely make out. I hope they expand on this in the future, it just seems a bit of a waste of time right now. Anyway, rant over. And speaking of Galactopedia, the next article is about the Centennial Bloom, an indigenous Xi'an plant that blooms once every 100 Earth years. This is actually a pretty good article, and contains the level of information I hope to see in the actual Galactopedia in the future. And lastly, and because CIG have gone skin and paint mad this last week, next month's subscriber flare items will be, different colored multi-tools. Yay. Salvage. We don't have any implementation of it yet, not even tier 0. And yet, we have a monstrous great salvage ship in game already. So fear not salvage fans, this week's calling all devs is focused entirely on the subject. At long last, finally we may see some good news about the collection, and selling of space debris. Ah, not so fast there citizen. Hold your horses. So first we join the legendary Papmeister in his box in Frankfurt who explains that there are four different types of salvage they have in mind. Component salvage, where we can remove, break down, and sell ship components, that we find in wrecks. We then have more salvage, where ships can actually be crunched up with a giant pair of space pliers. Siphoning, where we can rob the fluids, fuel, liquids, gases, and data etc. And finally there's hull scraping, which Pappy describes as removing paint. So paint salvage then. I literally have no idea what this is supposed to mean. 
it's then over to Blighty, as John Crew expertly explains that there is a shit ton of stuff yet to be completed, before we are anywhere near ready for implementation. Before popping over to Seed and Truffin in Frankfurt explains how power, fuel, and everything else will all work together as physicalized components. Finally, we bounce back over to the Papmeister's box, as he sums up for us, that Salvage is waiting on power, to work the way they want it to. We then need all items to go into the ships, and these two things are being worked on. From there apparently there's a lot of figuring out to do, which makes me wonder, why the fuck haven't they got this figured out already? It honestly sounds as though, at this stage, salvage is far more complicated than they thought, and don't really know how they are going to make it work. But hey, at least we have the reclaimer. So, in a nutshell, it sounds like realistically, we are bloody years away from decent salvage mechanics. With the glimmer of hope that physicalized components may be the key, to being tier 0 in the near future. Who knows. We are almost at the end of the Invictus launch week, and the Wizpig News Network has been on ArtCorp every day, to bring you the latest and greatest from the Bevic Convention Center. I'll leave a link below for each report. What I will say though, is the event has been far from problem free, with day 1 being a clusterfuck of epic proportions, with people unable to get in 4 days. It took me a lot of faffing about, and many many hours, before I was able to get in. But I have to say, once I finally got in, it was okay. Well, for 10 minutes, then I got booted. The very latest patch though, that was released midweek, did make a huge improvement to stability, at least for me. My conclusion though is, that the whole debacle may have put off a lot of folks who were tempted, and on the fence, but simply couldn't get into the free fly. I hope this is not the case though, and that the event proved to be successful for CIG. It's over to the roadmap next for the May 29th roundup, and it looks like there are two entries for us to scrutinize. First, the thruster efficiency curves and aerodynamics card has been added to the PU roadmap under the Alpha 3.10 column. This will mean more realistic aerodynamic flight and a whole lot of bitching from owners of the Terrapin, Staff Era, and any other brick-shaped vessels. And second, the ship HUD rework description has been changed to reflect that it's utilizing the new building blocks tech. Tickety boo. And that's it. It looks like bad news for bad guys folks, as the Drake Cutlass Blow is now on sale, and there's a whole new page dedicated to it on the RSI website. Let's check it out. So the blow is focused on three main aspects of law enforcement gameplay. Control. Capture. And contain. Which can just as easily be applied to donuts as well as those pesky perps. Awesome. So how does the blow allow for this amazeballs new gameplay? I'm glad you asked citizen. Because you see, the Cutlass Blue comes equipped with not only its own fully integrated quantum dampener, for dampening all of the quantums, but a matching set of 12 custom, 100% Bori and Dura steel coffins with adjustable LED mood lighting, because body bags are so last week. It also has special supercharged thrusters, 12 SCU of cargo, and special flashy lighting called EVL. Come on CIG, how did you miss sticking an iron there, and calling it evil, emergency vehicle integrated lighting? You CIG marketing peeps can have that one for free. Okay, so this all sounds good, and may be tempting for owners of the Cutlass Black. Let's have a look at purchasing opt. Shuns. So let me get this straight CIG, for a quantum dampener, solid dura steel body bags, and some flashy lights, I have to pay $75 over the base price of the black. Are you fucking kidding? Come on. 
the black is better in practically every way and definitely more useful right now. I just don't see how you can justify this. I mean, the red is going for $135, which is just about swallowable. But $175, you are having a bubble bath. I'd almost go as far as saying you're taking the piss. If it was 140, or hell, even 150, I might be tempted. But this just seems a little dick turp into me. Which is a shame, as I've had a lot of fun flying about in it. The cockpit is great, compared to the black. But there's no way I'd get one over the black for that price. But that's just me. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Is the blue overpriced? Well, that's about it for this week's episode. But I shall just leave you with this. As always, thanks for watching. Now, commence like button slapping and subscribing. Do it now.